Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. If you heat your home or your shop with a wood-burning stove or a fireplace, you're gonna create a lot of hardwood ash. And you shouldn't just throw that out because it can be used in the garden. With a couple of caveats, stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. You know, wood ash has been around as long as there's been fire. And the trick is to make good use of it instead of seeing it as a waste product. Historically, it's been used for all sorts of things. Lye is created out of it and has made soap uh, and is also used for fertilizer, for creating grit on icy surfaces and can be actually used as a cleaning powder. Well, you can use it in your garden and your compost pile with a few caveats. Let's get into it. If you've done even a little bit of gardening and have used fertilizer, you'll notice three numbers that are on any container of fertilizer. There's three numbers that represent N, P, K, and those are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, wood ash is full of potassium, the K in NPK. It's also full of uh, calcium because after sulfur and nitrogen is burned off on wood, then you end up with trace elements of other things like copper, magnesium, but mainly what you've got in wood ash is calcium and potassium. And you can certainly see that in the texture of it. So when you take a look at wood ash, you can see that there's not much less of, left of the original material, and it's easy to envision there's lots of calcium and potassium in this. Now, you can't just take this and spread it heavily around your plants or in your garden because it is very salty and it can actually toxify the soil. Toxify? Is that a real word? Is toxify a real word? Yeah, it's real. Now, a couple things you need to keep in mind. Wood ash is highly alkaline. It has a high pH. So if you're in an area that already has above neutral soil, neutral is seven. If you're seven and a half, eight, then you've got to use this very sparingly because you'll actually make the soil more alkaline. However, if you're in an area where the soil is acidic below seven, this is a great way to change the pH and to neutralize the soil and make it more habitable for the plants that you're growing. The other thing you need to keep in mind is you never use large batches. You use more dustings of this material. And when you do so, because it is very dusty, don't do that when it's windy outside. I like to apply it when the ground is moist so it sticks and wear a dust mask and don't let this get into your lungs because it's not good for you. As you put it on the soil, it is highly water soluble. So immediately spray it in, water it, let it leach into the soil and only do it in small amounts. You can also use this great resource in your compost pile. So when you put this in though, again, you wanna dust and mix it in, dust and mix it in, and use no more than five to 10% total volume in your compost pile. Otherwise, you'll change the pH and it won't break down at the level it should. So you can use it there as well. Another thing you can do is to help rhubarb plants. Now rhubarb has oxalic acid in the leaves and at the end of the season when the leaves droop and kind of melt into the ground, it's actually acidifying the soil over time. And if your soil is fairly acidic, what you'll find is that the rhubarb does not turn as red as people tend to like. We live in an alkaline area, and even with that happening, we've ended up with acidic areas under the plants, and a lot of our rhubarb is green with only a red tinge. Now, it doesn't uh, change the flavor, it's still wonderful, but that red appearance is really pleasing. So you can, again, dust around uh, the base of a rhubarb plant or uh, get it watered in. The other thing to know about this is that potassium is uh, pretty transient. So when you water it in, it's not gonna sit in the soil for a long time. So when you dust it in uh, and water it in, it kind of gives a boost right away. It can also be used to help tomato plants that are developing 
blossom end rot. Blossom end rot is a condition that many people think is a fungus or something, but it's simply a calcium deficiency. And because there's both potassium and calcium in this wonderful wood ash, Putting that around the base of a tomato plant, watering in is going to boost the accessible calcium at the root zone, giving the plant what it needs to build the fruit, which has kind of like a calcium matrix in it. If there is a deficiency of a calcium, it only can build so much fruit and then you get this canker on the end, which is really distasteful. The rest of the tomato is fine, but the tomato just looks lousy and it'll probably be passed over. So that's another area it helps. You can also use this wood ash early in the season when the ground is moist and just to give an overall boost to your garden. Again, dust um, maybe a half of, of a five gallon over a thousand square foot uh, works really well just dusting over, spraying in or letting it stick to moist ground to kind of give the whole soil a boost. Again, if you're in alkaline areas, be sure that you're not overdoing it because you can really alter the pH and really cause problems. So this is just a great resource, it's just not garbage. Of course, make sure that one last thing, use only ash that has been purely wood products that have been not treated, coated, put in with binders, so stay away from OSB, MDF, melamine, uh, particle board, uh, treated pallets, treated wood or lumber or, or railroad ties, all of that, don't use it. But if you're using straight firewood, and uh, it's straight wood ash like this, you've got a great resource that can now go to work for you. If you found this video to be helpful, won't you like it? And better yet, subscribe, and when you do, ring the bell, and that way you'll be notified approximately every Saturday of another great video about the home, the shop, the garden, or the kitchen, or great product reviews. Hey, you know something else that people like you that really like the outdoors find to be a great use is this great outdoor sink that we put together complete with a materials list. Check out this video here. We've had a lot of people build it. We think you're gonna love it. And then check out this other video Video here that we've created for you and YouTube thinks is perfect for your interest. Hey, until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from Dirt Farmer Jay kicking some ash. <laughs>